All right, welcome to the Barbarak channel. Uh, today I'll add some brain to our relays, you know. I've used Raspberry Pi uh, Pico uh, for various developments, you know, like you can, you know, uh, even on this uh, site and in this video series, and you can probably find a lot of useful and applicable information on what you can do with uh, Pico here, you know. It's fantastic uh, board, it's great for, you know, it's very easy to develop uh, with uh, MicroPython. Uh, and that's it, you know, what I'll do is really just simple stuff with Pico, you know, just controlling relays. Uh, these are just out of the gate, I have to make, uh, you know, a note, these are all signal level relays. Uh, I'm not qualified enough to give any advice on high voltage relays, so we, we keep using up to 9 volt power supplies for this, nothing high voltage, uh, and if you don't know what you're doing, you might get yourself killed. Uh, so, uh, that's out of the way. Anyway, uh, last time uh, we did a lot, well, something simple with, with this, you know, like, simple, right? There was lots of information in there, how to, how to use monostable, uh, bistable, and uh, how to control this uh, in kind of a discrete implementation. So, um, just a quick refresher, you know, uh, let me uh, bring that up. You know, here we covered monostable uh, relays, uh, you need to apply control signal here all the time to keep it on. Um, it was relatively straightforward. Uh, then, you know, we were playing with this kind of a switching uh, control circuit, you know, that's similar to what you have in boss pedals, uh, electrical switching. And then, you know, we talked about a bit more advanced uh, configuration for, you know, uh, by stable or latching uh, version of uh, relays, you know. So I'm gonna um, build upon this, you know. Uh, one of the big things was that, that we were using 9 volts and um, what I'm going to uh, cover here is, is really, I lumped this, this is pretty much the same as I showed uh, before. I'm gonna point out uh, some uh, notable differences, but here's my control circuit. So a switch, we need one wire for control. And if you notice before I had this control and you know inverted control, sort of. Uh, that was deliberately done so we can, you know, vary control circuit that controls this. But um, so as you can see, I only changed this, and it's pretty straightforward, right? Um let's talk about this uh, real quick. Uh, with about actually, let's not do that. Uh, I have this uh, wired up, not fully. Uh, I disconnected power supply from uh, my uh, monostable version, but we we're gonna go through that. Uh, let's go through code first, you know, because I covered a lots of things uh, in 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 a series about uh, creating your own uh, MIDI pedal. So here is one of the most simple ones from that series, you know, uh, how, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to run this script, and what it does is, all it does is, controls LED. So, reads the button state, and reacts on, stepping on it, I suppose, and it's, it's very simple. Uh, I covered this using, uh, async IO uh, that comes with MicroPython. I mean, it's really simple stuff. Uh, however, you know, uh, you should, if, if you've seen this in my previous videos on, on Pico MIDI, you can do this in your sleep. If you haven't, well, you know what, have a look at that. Uh, it's, this is really 16 lines of code, you know. Uh, so, what we're gonna do is, um, you saw there, uh, um, let me show you what I did here. So this is when I press the button, just um, I toggle the the 
LED. So here, if you look at here, all I did was I added this line and this line and this line. <laughs> so now we have, instead of 16 lines, we have 18. I changed this line, so I didn't add it. So it added two lines. Okay, so we have this uh, output pin set up. This is our control pin. And I'm passing into this toggle function. So when I when I press the, the button, it, it toggles. And in this case, it toggles LED and it toggles control, the control pin. So I'm not gonna run this yet. Uh, I'm just gonna go back to the uh, diagram and we're gonna go and see just real briefly what happens here, you know. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna go back here. Everything here is the same. The topology is the same. The things that are different are our supply. We don't have nine volt supply here. We might have it uh, when we, you know, we are, comp depends on what pedal are we making here, you know. If you're making a pedal, hybrid pedal with uh, digital control and, you know, like analog, output whatever you know you might have nine volts and this might be how you use it having said that control in in that previous video was done with control circuit that was plus uh, nine volts zero you know so we have different control here it's 3.3 volts this is just raspberry pi pico so um that may not work uh the way you would hope it were it would because you know you put for example uh yeah we'll get to that it it will probably work but you know you have to be careful you know uh because there will be a difference in in in, in voltage potential drop etc but we, we didn't i didn't change this at all okay and still nine volts is coming here when we have the relay in one position it's one LED turned on in the other position, the other, red, green. Um, just to demonstrate something, and this is why I have this LED here as well, you know, uh, on, on with Raspberry Pi Pico. Here, again, we don't have nine volts. So just a note here uh, in the previous, you have to see the previous video. Uh, I used three volt rated uh, relay. So I had to add this resistor to make sure that I don't uh, go over the, the maximum voltage for this, uh, for the coil. So just something to be aware of. So if I go back here, everything the same, I change here to 3.3 volts and 3.3 volts here. That's simplest, okay? That's the change. I had to change this resistor here uh, because obviously this is three volts, it needs to be a lower drop. I don't even need it because 3.3 volts uh, is, you know, it's okay. This one can sustain that. But just, I, I kept it just. Uh, so my, I don't need to change my uh, breadboard, you know? So with all that in place, I just need to rewire here. So this used to be at nine volts. I'm just gonna wire it here to 3.3. Uh, this is shared ground and i'm going to actually add here a nine volt supply and you can do this you know it's not a problem i'm not driving this to pico i am literally using it just to drive uh if you look at here i'm just driving this circuit so this is a great way to see how this is uh isolating uh, your two circuits because this one is nine volt powered you know, and this one is 3.3 volt, uh, volts powered. So I think this is a good example, you know. Um, so let me run this. I have it here, right? Run this. So let's see. Right, and it works. And it was that simple, you know, and I can do all of this. Brilliant. Can you see this on the video? I hope you can. This green one is a bit. Now, having said, a green has um, uh, forward voltages is higher than the red one, so I, I could have probably scaled those resistors a bit uh, for. But you know, this was super simple. Okay, so next thing 
on the agenda is to run, maybe we can support momentary version of the button. Now that we have basic hardware, we can just play with this, you know? Um, so I added, let me show you real quick. So uh, what I did, actually, let me run this, right? Because I haven't tried this, might not work. So I better, you know, Okay, huh? It worked. Phew, that was good. Um, so the only change, if you if you look at here, I commented out this line here. So this is our old code, and this is our old code here. What I did was, uh, this library has this press function and release function. So before I use press function as you know, like when I press, I change the state. Uh, I did not care about release, but now I can do this when I press. The button control is on when I release control is off and as you would expect you know LED is on control is on LED is off control pin is off simple now I, I know it's kind of a now 28 lines of code but really this is just super simple uh, hopefully hopefully makes sense so if I wanted to keep it you know Latching style, let's comment this out. Stop, run, and we easy. All right, and let's look at the uh, by stable one. So let me just bring this up again. The very, the, you have to see the previous video. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go and explain this here. And uh, it's pretty much the same. I, I made a mistake here. It's not 150. I'm going to uh, fix this. This is, again, 10. Uh, so this is from the previous uh, one. So here, I'm going to try and do the same thing, you know, uh, instead of 9 volts here. And for this. All right. So back to the drawing board, right? Uh, this did not work. Um, and there's a simple reason why this did not work and I, I completely uh, didn't really think about it. This is just too low voltage to, to generate enough current and uh, consequently uh, voltage here. So what did I have to do? Like. You know what, I know this works, so if I have 9 volts here, I thought maybe this will work. Uh, but then this control, I can't, if I drive this 3.3 volts, this, is, this will always be, uh, uh, you know, positive. So, uh, or in this case negative, so it, it will be always on. Uh, so that will not work. Um, so I have to kind of translate this into... Uh, a bit better translate this kind of a uh, the level here so so my control here will turn on and off this uh, transistor and it would just act uh, and it you know a, as a level uh, shifter I suppose um, and I can now use nine volts here. Uh, I had to increase this uh, capacitance here just to, to get it to work uh, more reliably or I needed to lower this resistance. I went for uh, higher capacity, but other than that, everything else looked the same as the previous one. Um, and here is what I did. I added this uh, and it won't work until I put 9 volts there. Okay. It's working. Woo um, and that really does it. Now um, I was thinking, can I do something with the uh, five volts as well? 
So turns out I can. And uh, if you remember last time, if you watched the video, I was talking about this resistor here. So if I, because I can barely get three volts here with five volt supply here, I can barely get it. Uh, I need to remove, uh, even when I remove this, I barely get three volts. So, um, well, let's see if I just rewire this. So I'm gonna take off this nine volts. Uh, I'm gonna rewire this. So I'm just gonna bypass this resistor. So I'm going to the capacitor directly. So it's like, I got rid of it. It's not working because I did not apply five volts. And now I have five volts here. Uh, where did I say that goes? Here, okay. Okay, and it's working. Now, can I apply that? Uh, can I turn this on with, with moment, make this momentary switch? Let's see, stop. Run. Let's see if this works. And that's working. Okay. I thought uh, when I started getting that wrong uh, that I won't be able to do it because, you know, it, it is a bit tricky to uh, come up with you know, at least I'm not at that level that I can just easily do this, but I, I knew enough uh, how this worked to, to make, it, make it work eventually. So if you wanted to use five volts, just plug in here five volts and get rid of this. So um, maybe I'm just gonna, when I put, a, put up a blog post, I'm, I'm gonna put that as an alternative there. Um, so look, we got this uh, uh, working with how many lines of code did we say? 26. And probably if you wanted to do, you know, you can probably make some kind of a configuration here or a flip switch or, you know, like dip switch or something like that. You add it to your circuit and you can have either, um, you know, latching or uh, momentary switch type. Uh, but you know, like, with just this, you 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 can do loads of things uh, with this. I'm, I'm, I suppose the imagination is the limit. You know, whatever you can imagine, you can do it. Um, it's all in software now. So I hope you enjoyed this, uh, and we'll see what we're gonna do next time. Until then.